And down in the lower left, we should have kinetic energy. And kinetic energy, again, stolen right from one of your flipping book caps, I uh, can't remember who I like it, is, is simply the energy an object has because it is moving. So now this page becomes the entire journal entry with potential energy written in the upper right, kinetic energy written in the lower left. Oh. Cool, I realize the font is small. You can look at the first next to you if you need to. Okay, story time. Well, I grew up in Rochester. Okay, that's where I'm actually from. And then I went to Le Moyne, uh, and then I got a job here, student teacher, and they hired me. Don't know why. Now they can't get rid of me. It's a good, good deal for me. Um, but my summer job in high school was working at Seabreeze Amusement Park. That's what I did uh, from the age of like 16 to like the age of 19. That was my summer job. Is anybody actually at? It's a super old school. It's like a 150 year old oh. park. Anybody ever been there before? Just curious. Right on the. Oh, cool. Um, one of the jobs that I had was uh, working at a ride called the Jackrabbit. It's their, it's their oh, old yeah. wooden coaster. Oh, yeah. That coaster oh, yeah. is over a hundred years old. And what's really, really cool about that coaster is it's so old school that it does a great job showing a few um, really interesting scientific principles. Roller coasters have been around for a long, long, long time. And they're not very technically advanced, uh, a lot of the wooden roller coasters. If you've ever been to like Darien Lake and you've ridden like the Predator yes. or anything like that, like those old school wooden coasters, some cool stuff's going on with them that I want to talk about. A roller coaster, and you're going to want to do this um, in your journal, and I'm, I'm glad that you're excited, but again, I can't have you having side conversations about roller coasters right now because you'll miss the focus. Uh, roller coasters are kind of cool. Draw a drop, and then have it go back up, and then kind of go off your page. Old school wooden <laughs> coasters only have one electrical component, one place where energy is added or used. Do you know where it is? Like the jackrabbit only has one electrical component on it. Actually, they upgraded a couple other things, but let's lie and say it does. Uh, do you know what the one thing it has on it? What? Yeah, the part that propels you. Does anybody know what propels you on an old school roller coaster? You only get propelled for part of it. In fact, um, the part that propels you is just right here under the track to the little tip. Does anybody know what that is? I'm just curious. Do you know what that is? What? Yeah, it's like a belt or a chain. Uh, that actually drags you up. Do you realize on a roller coaster like the Predator? Predator is a huge wooden coaster. It's actually pretty fun. I like that. Yeah, okay. Right. The only part of that ride that requires any energy is just the chain that drags you to the top of the first hill. In fact, if you've ever ridden, I'll, I'm going to use the Jackrabbit because I love that coaster. Uh, if you can load in, let's say we load 12 people into the Jackrabbit, there's a big old lever. I don't know, some of you might actually remember this if you sat there and watched the person who does it. It's a big old lever, you go like this, that moves a piece of wood that's holding the car still out of the way. And back when I was there, you actually used to have to put your butt on the last car, which is pretty awkward for whoever's sitting in that seat. You actually had to put your butt on the last car and push it out of the house. And then it would start rolling ever so slowly, double a little tiny dip, and then locks on the chain. And then it goes, you know what I'm talking about? You probably know that from a lot of coasters. That's the only place it's getting any of its energy, when it's going, and it's, it's actually going up, 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 and then it sets you on the track. You know what that sounds like too. Chicka, 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 chicka. You know that noise right before you get that drop. You can feel the chain disengage. By the way, that chicka, 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 are these little tiny uh, teeth that keep you from rolling backwards in case the chain breaks. In fact, those rides, the, those weird rides are really strange. Because once you ditch somebody, and let's just draw it as a circle now because this is what your ghetto coaster is going to be like. Uh, once you ditch like a ball onto the coaster, it's like sledding down a hill. Once you push it off the top, it's going to go through the whole ride no matter what. One day it was like Senior Citizen Day or something like that. Oh I remember this so well. So I had all these oldies uh, in, in the car and they're all like, hey, Johnny. And I get them all in, make sure they're all good. I push them out of the house. They go out of the house. They're going up the chain. All their white hairs are going up. And right as they hit the top, uh, it starts pouring rain. Like pouring rain. You realize once you ditch off the top of that, you, you're going through the whole ride. Do you see what I'm saying? Because that's the only part that requires energy. The rest of it is just a coaster. Oh, 
one, you know. Uh, the rest of it just coasts the whole thing, like you're going downhill, uh, which is kind of interesting when you think about it. So all of the energy that you are going to have, 100% of it, in fact, you should write that, 100% of your energy comes from the chain dropping you on the top of that. And 100% of that energy is potential. So at the top of that first hill, 100% of your energy is potential energy. By the way, that's also the slowest part of the ride. You know what I'm talking about? Like, right? It's, that's what makes it so awesome. Because you get dropped, and then you're looking down, and then it goes like this. You're seriously going like this fast as you're going over the top. It's the slowest part of the whole ride, which makes it kind of cool. All right, great. When you start going down, like let's say you get like halfway down or so, you've lost a lot of your potential energy. The higher something is in the air, the more potential energy it has. You put a whole bunch of energy into a chain, you got 100% of your potential energy, you start coming down, you get like halfway down. And you've got less of your potential energy, you actually lost it. Uh, let me show you a little something with potential energy. Here's a book of mine from 17th grade. It's just my biggest one I've got over there. So I'll do this. All right, check this out really quickly. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to hold that right there. Okay. Now everybody kind of smiles a little bit, like an evil heart rate smile. Everybody's like, right, like this. okay, don't come back here. Okay, great. So um, there we got a little bit of, little bit of uh, everybody's laughing because it's got potential energy stored in it. I'm not doing it. I'm not smashing this head. You're just all laughing because you know it has the potential energy in it. Now if I go like this, it's actually, can you see my knuckles like turn away? It's not, it's heavy. If I go like this, <laughs> It's got more potential energy in it. Can I explain like why it has more potential energy in it when I hold it here? But uh, what? Yeah, I could accelerate and hit him harder if I were to. Well, that was close. Good thing you put your hands on. Okay. If I were to, yeah, if I were to drop this, it would have more energy in it. Now here's something weird. Law of conservation of energy. Where did the energy come from to give it more? It comes from me. I gotta burn more calories. To, if I bring this up to the top of a ladder and I climb way up and I hold it, I actually put the energy into the book by eating food and burning calories, bringing up the ladder and then holding it there, waiting to smash his face. So the higher something is, the more potential energy it has. Halfway down the hill, it's going to have about 50% of the initial potential energy it had. So now here's where the here's where the fun starts. So far, that's kind of I get that. Um, where did it go? Because it can't disappear. Remember the law of conservation of energy. Energy can't be created, but it also can't be destroyed. So where did the potential energy go? If I got 100% of my potential energy here, but then halfway down the hill, half of it is gone. It can't disappear. So what did it become? It has become kinetic energy. So now. I'm 50% potential and 50% kinetic. That means it's going 50% of the maximum speed it's going to hit. Now at the bottom, that's all at this point right here. So now we're split 50-50. Now at the bottom is where it gets interesting. This bottom part right here is the fastest part of the entire ride. Some kids are like, is it right there? No, it's right here right down there. If you ever ridden the Superman and like ride a steel coaster, you're going up, 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 you get dropped right there where you're getting mushed down into your seat. That is the fastest part of the entire ride. Why is it the fastest part of the entire ride? Tell me in terms of potential and kinetic energy. Why is it the fastest part of your ride, Ceresi? Because like, um, there's no more like potential and so like kinetic is still moving. The potential energy is now 0%, so it all must be kinetic, which means that, so I've got 100% kinetic, sorry, that's a little ugly. So at the very bottom, the potential is gone. It's on the ground. All the energy that you put in it from the chain is now gone. It's on the ground, but it's also the fastest part of the entire ride. Cool. Then the only thing I could possibly ask you before I have you build these things is, so what happens when it starts going up? the next hill. There's no chain on the next hill. Okay? There's no chain. It's not like you stop at every single hill and then you're like chicka chicka chicka. Ah, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's not how roller coasters go. They're like they go all over. So what starts happening when you start going uphill? Well, um, do they even out again? Yeah, they might even out again. That's not a bad way to say it. Let me ask a more specific question. 
what happens to the potential energy as you start going back up the hill? I made that my question more specific. Your answer was good, but I just realized I want something else out of you. Parkers, what happens to potential? Uh, the potential energy starts like building up again. Yeah, you start building your potential again. By the way, my good question is coming up in about 30 seconds, so if you want to answer the good one, uh, pay attention. The potential energy starts going up. Where are you getting it from? Where? You can't just like start having potential energy. There's no chain. So where is the potential energy coming from? You can't just be made from nothing. What? Let's read. The kinetic energy. The kinetic energy. The kinetic. Yeah. Yes, you're right. The kinetic energy is going down. So now all of a sudden you start going up, potential energy is going up, kinetic energy is coming down. Now my favorite question from the entire thing, my favorite, favorite, favorite question I could possibly ask, is why does the first hill on an old school roller coaster have to be the highest? And now all of a sudden as you start thinking back on roller coasters, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, most of the roller coasters I ride the big hill is the first hill. Wow. <laughs> Why does the first hill have to be the biggest hill on traditional roller coasters? Matt, what are you thinking? Well, if it goes up, that's the only energy it's going to need. And once it takes a huge drop, it's going to have enough energy to go the rest of the way. Yeah, it doesn't have enough energy to get the, Could you imagine how stinky this ride would be? Imagine if my hill went to here, okay? Imagine it went right up here at E5. And you're like, yay! Dig -dig 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 ah! Whoa! Ah! And then you get stuck right there. By the way, when they're building coasters, this happens all the time. If anything slows down your car, you would get stuck out on the track at a low spot, which would be kind of weird. If you had your hand out, like rubbing the wheel, getting it to slow down, you get stuck on the Superman coaster, like going up a loop. Hey, and they have to come rescue you. That actually does happen uh, every once in a while. Back to my back to my senior citizen stories. They were soaking wet, which I was feel bad about, because I mean they're out on this ride, and I know they have to go through the whole ride. I know that they have to. There's no way to stop it, right? Because it's a coaster. It's going to coast through the whole ride and then come back in the house and I gotta stop it with the brake, right? So they're gone, but the track is wet, right? Oh. It usually takes about 55 seconds, okay? 55 seconds to get through the ride. That's when I throw the brake and I catch them coming in. All of a sudden, at like 51 seconds, I hear, tick -tick 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 -tick. I look whoosh, right back out. <laughs> so I'm like, oh. They got a twofer in the rain, which makes it kind of fun there. Uh, yeah, so basically they came in a little hot. So all those little things like rain and stuff can affect whether or not it gets the energy it needs. That's why roller coasters very often will close in the rain. You ever notice that? That it starts yeah. raining a little bit and they close? That's the reason why. It changes how long it takes them to get through the track, which can mess stuff up. Uh, it always scares me when they have roller coasters where they have two cars on the track at the same time. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh. if one's out there and something happened, there's no stopping the other one. That's why most of them will have a break somewhere else on the track. You ever ride in a roller coaster and then all of a sudden you get to a spot that's like tick, 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 and you're like, what was that? That was a break that they throw. I think, you know what? Uh, Darian Lake, the Viper has that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah if you're uh, out on the course, it drops you. Then there's one thing, I think it's right before you go into the course cruise, where you feel it's like tick, 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 and you're like, what was that? That was them taking a little bit of speed off. They actually give you too much energy into that, so they have a computer controlled brake that can slow you down to make sure that you're coming in in the time that you need, uh, which is, again, kind of a cool thing. Yeah, what's up? Oh, the Bush Gardens in Florida. Is that the Loch Ness Monster? Oh, God. That's a great coaster, by the way. I'm talking, oh, there's the. Zebra, the lion, which is basically a predator, times it's, two, and they race. Yeah. And like they come like this close to each other. That's like, awesome. There's a bridge, and like, the goes on the Yeah, I like the dueling coasters too, where they'll go out and then they come back and you can see each other and stuff like that. Um, when you are, I know you're just riding the ladybug at the fair right now. <laughs> um, these are big coasters, though. You should definitely try. I would pay big money to see you on the ladybug coaster. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Great, right, let's build one of these. Ladies, I got an image in my head I did not get out. Um, 